Gandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, uh, hindi ko na po isa-isahin pero binabati ko pong lahat ang mga dignitaries natin, mga kagalang-galang mula sa BOST, sa UPLB, sa DNR at sa local government units na, nan, na kinat, uh, nandito ngayon sa ating programa. Ganun din po sa aking mga kasamahan sa UPLB Museum of Natural History, lalo na sa ating Director Dr. Marian De Leon. So i-share ko po ang aking screen. Uh, <clears throat> ang nakalagay po sa programa ay Introduction to Cave Ecology. Uh, pero i-dinugsong ko po ang Introduction to Cave Ecology and Biodiversity Research. Uh, so uh, probably uh, mas magandang ma ma madidiscuss ni Dr. Day mamaya ang geological aspects ng caves but for our purpose for this part of the lecture uh, caves in the biological sense uh, are defined as uh, each, each cave is a natural opening in solid rock with areas of complete darkness and with uh, the opening maybe a few milli just a few millimeters in diameter so it's a unique environment and uh, what makes it, it unique is mainly the lack or no direct support with solar energy or sunlight. Because of that, it is also home to several unique species, uh, species that have um, adapted to conditions that are otherwise inhospitable to normal or what we call surface dwelling species. Uh, inside the cave, there are, uh, we divide them into, into cave life zones based mainly on the amount of life that, life that, that can still enter as well as the range of temperature. So we have main, three main, uh, mainly three zones, the entrance zone, the twilight zone, and the dark zone. So the entrance zone, that's where uh, light can still, light is still present. Uh, in the twilight zone, there may be still a little amount, a little amount of light present, but uh, not enough to, uh, to promote photosynthesis. Kung bagas, kung naalala nyo sa ating botany or basic biology, kinakailangan sa photosynthesis ay yung PAR level what is synthetically active radiation. The amount of light in the twilight zone is not enough to support photosynthesis. And then the third zone, which is, uh, that's why we, the definition includes in, uh, the provision for dark zone, which can be divided further into transition zone and deep or dark zone. Uh, the transition zone uh, is already dark, but uh, there is little influence from the external conditions, mainly because of humidity and external heat outside the cave. But in the deep zone, uh, it's really almost 99% to 100% humidity and uh, no, more, no more effect of uh, fluctuations from the outside. So uh, in those cave life zones, there is cave biodiversity. And as uh, mentioned by our previous speakers, uh, caves serve as refuge or home to several unique species. Again, they can be divided into trogloxins, trogloviles, and troglobites. So what are these? Trogloxins are those that occur sporadically in caves and subterranean habitats. And they include cave visitors, those who accident, which accidentally uh, enter caves. And of course, the ectoparasites that are attached to these visitors and accidentals. And they're usually found on the entrance and twilight zones. They, they rarely go into the dark zone. Uh, they can be present also on the surrounding karst environment. 
Now, for troglophiles, they could be further classified as either subtroglophile, which are the facultative residents. Pwede silang lumabas o pumasok sa kweba. And uh, they are associated with the surface habitat. Surface habitat means the habitat outside the cave. So at, at a certain stage of their life. The other one is eutroglophile. And these are also uh, more or less permanent cave residents. They can be found on all uh, cave zones, these uh, troglophiles. So troglobites are obligate and permanent cave residents. Wala nang alisan. Kumbaga, ito yung may fo kumbaga, nakatagpo sila ng for forever sa loob ng kweba. So they often exhibit uh, troglomorphisms which are unique morphological and or behavioral characteristics. So ito yung uh, mga katulad ng reduced eyes or minsan wala na talagang mata. So yung pong nangangarap na maging chinito, ito po yung pagkakataon ninyo. Uh, reduced pigmentation, gusto po niyong pumuti, kweba po yun. Uh, elongated sensory, gusto niyo po maging long-legged, kweba rin po yun. Uh, mga joke lang po yan, pero uh, sa totoo lang po ay uh, ang kalimitang explanation sabi, sinasabi dahil hindi, no, hindi daw nagagamit ang mata at uh, hindi daw naman nagkakakitaan kaya walang lumilit ang mata at, at nawawala yung kulay pero hindi po kasi yun na uh, natural selection explanation. Siguro po sa mga susunod na webinar natin pwede natin maipaliwanag ano ba talaga ang dahilan sa evolution ng bakit na lumiliit ang mata o bakit uh, na pumuputi o nawawala ang kulay. So they are usually found in the dark zone. And most of, most of them, they are diverse but with low population density. Uh, that's very logical because mas less po ang amount ng energy available inside the cave. The energy is mainly from the outside brought by brought inside the cave into the cave by bats and swiftlets mainly now uh sorry pala hindi ko po na, na may mention yung mga picture but here is the picture of our director so wala pong gender issue pag sa cave research tinatanggap po namin lahat ng uh, male female o kung ano man ang inyong preferences so caves in the philippines uh, over 1,500 caves. Actually, ang estimate po ng DNR ay uh, almost 2,000. And mostly are limestone caves. We suspect that there might be a few uh, other types of caves, but most of them would be limestone caves. And they are, again, uh, to emphasize, they are unique, natural, and nat non-renewable resources. Uh, I mean, the caves, uh, house unique, natural, and non-renewable resources. And it is important that we conduct important uh, scientific, economic, educational studies because they are also, uh, these caves also provide those values to us. Uh, these values are already with the caves with or without humans. But with humans, we realize the values of caves if we emphasize the scientific value, the economic value, the educational value, the cultural and historical value. Because yeah, if, if you realize many of our historical events, yung Biak na Bato Republic sa Kueba ng Biak na Bato, yung unang mga tao na mga ninuno natin na, na, na detect halimbawa sa Tabon Cave, uh, yung paglilibing ng mga ninuno natin sa Cordillera, doon sa Kabayan Cave, ito ay associated lahat sa kweba. And of course, aesthetic values. Marami po sa ating mga kwento ay naguugat sa kweba. Uh, in the future, atin pong i-explore yun. Uh, totoo bang ang kweba ay pintuan papunta sa impyerno? <laughs> 
Joy. Marami pong alamat na ganun, pero marami na po kaming napasok na kuweba ni na Sir JC, ni na Sir Philip, pero wala naman kami nakitang impyerno. Malamig nga po eh. Okay po. And caves are protected under Republic Act 1972. In the in the MNH, nagsimula po kami ng nagkaroon ang ng no ng cave and cars biodiversity research program at involved po lahat hindi lang bats hindi lang vertebrates so it's one of the research and extension programs of the UPLB MNH. Take note, research and extension hindi lang po research and we will we will see we will explain why. It has been conceived to generate basic bioecological data on organisms found inside and within the immediate karst vicinity of Philippine caves. We pay special focus, as, as mentioned, on the aspects of biodiversity and conservation. So the cave, uh, the cave and karst biodiversity research program has the unique And I mean, the ultimate objective to provide information, to support policy formulation and implementation toward environmental conservation. So lumalabas po kami, uh, uh, lahat ng aming research findings ay hindi lang, uh, well, we publish, uh, marami, oh, wala, marami pang ipapublish, pero we have published some. But aside from the uh, peer-reviewed scientific publications, we also have popular publications. We also conduct uh, kung saan po kami nag-collect uh, at nag-conduct ng cave assessment, bumabalik po kami doon sa community hanggat maaari para maibahagi, maibalik sa kanila yung kaalaman na kailangan nila. Mga halimbawa po niyan sa, sa Pangasinan, at sa ilang beses sa Pulilio at sa iba pang lugar para magkaroon ng, ng makatulong sa, di, sa mga desisyon ng local government tungkol sa kweba. So public education to heighten awareness and appreciation for Philippine biodiversity and its conservation, including those outside and inside the caves. And activities that Uh, ben that benefit concerned local communities, nabanggit ko na po ito, the Filipino public, as well as our teachers and, and students, other researchers, and even cavers. We involve hobbyists. So the Cave and Cars Biodiversity Research Program espouses the team approach. And that's why MNH has, uh, that's possible for us in the MNH because the, we have the wealth of talent from zoologists to botanists to entomologists to microbiologists and, and everything. Even the uh, communica science communication specialist. So we have the luxury of, and diver of diverse expertise. So it is implemented, this program is implemented by faculty members, the reps, the research scientists and curators the highly skilled technicians and the students who um, become our MNH students. So it involves, as I have mentioned, vertebrate biologists, entomologists, microbiologists, botanists, science communication specialists in terms of expertise. So ito po, halimbawa, si Ariel ay uh, Ariel Larona ng Forestry Herbarium. Sumasama po palagi kasama ni na Ma'am uh, Anali Hadzal at ni Michelle sa mga exploration sa mga especially plants outside in, in, in the cave entrances and outside the cave. Uh, kita po ninyo ito nandun sa loob ng kweba. Uh, we have collaborations even from abroad. This is Dr. Hans Klompen of Ohio. Uh, Kakolaborate po siya ni uh, Jeremy sa pag-aaral ng cave mites. And then yan, may, ma, marami pong dala pagdating sa loob. Uh, <clears throat> because of our involvement in cave research, through, uh, we were able to offer the first formal course on cave ecology in the country, Bio 154, uh, offered by the UPLB 
College of Arts and Sciences Institute of Biological Sciences, where uh, many of the MNH curators are serve as faculty or are full time faculty. And then uh, Mam Ma Marian and other staff of the MNH also participate as teachers and as uh, laboratory uh, instructors. So because of that, we have already trained more, uh, more than 40 students on various aspects of cave biology. Uh, at least five of our staff in the present program, Christian Lucanias, Renz Duco, Eugene Logato, Erolin, and uh, Kirk are involved in the uh, presently in the project, as well as the one of the stud, uh, uh, project staff, uh, Marnelli Soto Alviola, and then uh, the project has also produced those that are pursuing now PhD, Ninja Keyboard in China, now presently now pursuing PhD in China, Mac Mac Encinares, Steve now of this of Cebu and Jason of Nerebiskaya, uh, including uh, Joseph Rasalan, who was formerly with DNR, and so many others. And so uh, we hope to continue this na, na, ba, na, na antala lamang nitong pandemic, but we hope to resume as soon as the conditions allow. So it's a research continuum, as I have mentioned. Uh, this is a popular article written by the late James Alvarez, collaborating with our science communication specialist, Florante Cruz. Uh, it made sure, uh, this makes sure that our research activities translate to public service. We also provide technical assistance, resource and expertise sharing and information dissemination. This ultimately promote the importance of caves and, and the biodiversity it harbors and the appreciation of the Filipino people for their conservation and protection. So maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat at sa pagkakataong ito na makapagbahagi. Back to Michelle, salamat po. <laughs>